successful, ran its course. I learned a lot from those fellas. And I really grew and evolved as a person with that next level of music. My, my pop and puppy were super proud and mind blown. We even had radio commercials, man, on like Mega 100. And I had my name on the radio. I don't know if anybody would ever remember that, but I remember like the Lost So all these commercials would come on. And, you know, so I got thrown a bone a lot, you know, like, you know, I got, I got called out as one of the producers on the station. Like my name, I heard my name on the radio. Like that was cool as fuck. And um, yeah, man, so it, it, it Lost Soul ran its course. I'm not going to speak on how or why it ran its course and stopped, but it, let's just say it ran its course. I think in 2003 was one of the last compilations that got made. Well, after Lost Soul ended, I just went back to work and I was fucking really miserable. And I was still buying records. The evolution of collecting records changed. You know, eBay came out. You got the internet. You got, uh, you know, just easier ways to obtain these crazier rare records right because robert and sal had these crazy rare records because they were getting them from guys back east and and you know just really seasoned collectors from all over the midwest and east coast you know shit that you can see here in california at a, at a random record store um so when the internet came along uh you know i started really buying up crazy records you know like i said i learned a lot from robert and sal from like labels and just the sound and the the new vibration of music that we were heading for the new the new sound that we were trying to outdo each other and bring it to the light of, of people the masses uh so about two years man i'm on ebay i'm on uh you know just different uh craig moore websites now then there's dot coms you can go to like a record store online and i like, buy buy records and you know it's crazy you can meet collectors on you know myspace and interact with them and they're selling records and it just i started accumulating a lot of crazy records for those two years and in 2005 i remember um telling myself like man you know what i really miss you know doing my own seat you know being a part of the lost soul records count and 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 really pushing out the music man like it, i felt like a piece of me was dead so uh, and i seen all these other cds coming out you know like and I, and I would like you know i would read them and and, and you know see what they had and see what was coming out put my ear to the street and kind of get a vibe for what was going on in that time and i remember telling myself every time i heard a new cd i was hit man i was up on game with all these records i already knew like all those records that were all the cds that were coming out i already i could already called what they were going to put out because you could see the trend and what records were selling and what records were hot and what records were sought after by this little small group of collectors that existed so i could almost call out what the next comp was going to come out with see what songs are going to be on there but i always had the one up on them you know because like i said i was buying some crazy shit. Uh, i had the right connections with the right dealers from like pittsburgh and pennsylvania and, and hank fiegenbaum ed angle jerry pateri um james p pateri i mean like those are the guys i would call you know um mike noriega um down here and um there's another guy that i'm forgetting uh rich rosen in vegas as much as people have a lot to say about him that man has the crazy connections and dope ass records and there's a few other guys I'm, i know i'm forgetting to mention that have some like just out the wall shit man that i was buying so in 2005, I have all these crazy rare records that aren't on CD yet, right? Because I'm really big on that. You know, when we made these CDs when, with Lost Soul, I learned, hey, man, when you make a compilation CD, you don't ever want to repeat. You don't want to put out the same song twice, and you don't really want to copy this guy's CD. You don't want to put out, if he has this rare song out, you don't want to put that on your CD because that's like stepping on toes. You know, it's like, plus you're biting. It's like a copycat. You don't want to do that. You want to try to come out with the rare shit first so that's what i learned by running with lost soul so i came out with gangs i'm like you know what? in 2005 i'm gonna start my own thing i, I finally came across some money i had a little, i started my label me and my brother and, and my uh, cousin nick we were like you know what uh, i told my brother that hey man i, I want to start a, a record label and, and we came up with the name uh, sons of soul records which was me my brother and my pretty much nick same way we did Lost Soul, just how I learned. We came together, put money in, I made it legit, got the paperwork on it, started right away, called Danny, did some artwork on it, put it together. I already knew all the contacts, remember? I'm, I'm running up and down the coast, meeting every mom and pop shop. I, I knew everybody and everybody knew who I was and I had a really good relationship with everybody. So the minute um, I created 
Gangster Soul Harmony, you know, came up with the name Gangster Soul Harmony in 2005. And I dropped my first CD, which was Gangster Soul Harmony Volume 1. And all the songs on there were the first time they ever hit CD. Like, Pull Me El Caballeras, you know, uh, Four Below Zero, Tell Me Why, um, The Superbs on Altine, um, you know, um, all those songs that are on Volume 1 of Gangster Harmony, those songs were never on anybody else's CD. Those were all from me. Like, I didn't copy nobody. Everything on that volume was fresh, brand new songs. So when people bought it, it was all fresh, new shit, and it was dope shit. Like that. It was really like, cool. But then volume two came out, and volume three, and volume four, and every volume I came out with, I kept that standard of always bring out new shit first. So um, from 2005 to about 2010, when I was really going hot and heavy with releasing these, I pretty much made it my my business to like not repeat any songs or copy anybody else's stuff. So I had to really know who had what songs on what CD. That way I wouldn't step on toes. So I was really up on game with what songs were on one CD. I made it my job to know that. You know, that's why today I'm so knowledgeable and I can still recall like who put out what song first on what CD because it was my job to know that so I wouldn't step on toes. And so I would come up with fresh shit. So on my volume two, the webs is so hard to break a habit. And you know, all these songs that you guys now know that I, that, that you find on Gangsta Soul Harmony, chances are that was the first time they ever hit the fucking light of day. You know, aside from the artist releasing it is when I released these compilations. Um, main attraction, Keep On Walking, The Bonnevilles, I'll Be Right There, Siberians, Crime Baby Won't Help the Hurt. These are all records I was buying and nobody else had them on CD until I put them on CD. And I took pride in that, man, because I learned that from Lost Soul Records. And pretty soon, a few years later, you got YouTube came along. And um, yeah, pretty much anybody can start a YouTube account. And that's a whole different topic. But pretty much everybody would create a YouTube account and take all these old CDs, upload them into their account, put a fucking different picture on. And now they're playing, they're, they're furthering our music that we put out on CD with the comments they're leaving behind, that people are leaving behind. People, it looked like they were taking credit for what we were doing. Like, I see comments like, hey, that's a badass jam, what is that? You know, so-and-so, and see over the pages, like, you know, so-and-so oldies, that's a bad jam. And they, the, the owner of the page would be like, gracias, it's from the collection, I hope you enjoy it, thanks for stopping by. And they would give us no mention. You know, nobody would be like, oh, well, you know, you should go buy it on Lost Soul Records or you should go buy it on Gangster Soul Harmony or, or this song, I, I got it from Soulful Things or this came off of Tokers or this came off of this. Nobody really got any mention, you know, because people were just fronting and maxing, chilling in front of the YouTube they spent all day waxing, you know, fucking fronting, you know, perpetrating that this music was their music now. And it really is. It's for the people. But our namesake and, and our legacy kind of got lost in translation when all that happened, you know, our whole like identity started, like we started losing our identity of who we were. Now YouTube just took over and was like, all these songs were just getting uploaded. And now the history of who, it almost didn't matter no more, you know, cause YouTube was just making it so corrupt of, of, of us as collectors, you know, our, our pride of what we did was, di was diminishing in front of our face. And we're not getting credit for any of it. Granted, we're not the artists, and we know that, but we're the ones who brought it to light in the first place. You know, we're the ones, the reason why this, everybody knows these jams, you know, people who made these comps have a big role in why it's, like yourself probably knows these songs, you know, don't even realize you probably heard it on YouTube, but if you go before that, chances are, if you root it back, you're gonna root it back to one of these compilations.